There are so many video games out there that I feel like I couldn't play them all, even if something crazy happened, like, I don't know, a global pandemic forcing me to stay inside to complete games all day. And while some games are able to distract me and alleviate the quarantine madness, others make me feel more like I'm slowly losing my mind. Which brings me to everyone's favorite game that features both dragons and bubbles, Bubble Bobble. Hey everyone, and welcome to an all new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, where I am recompleting the original 120 games I played here on the channel. And I gotta tell you guys, uh, I'm worried that I'm starting to lose my mind here. I know we're all losing a little bit every day, and there are worse things than being stuck inside playing games all day, but I definitely miss being able to hang out with my friends. Well, then you're in luck, Gerard, because it's me, Riff, from Pixel Game Squad. I'm here to hang out and play Bubble Bobble with you, together! Remember? Oh great, now I'm so desperate for human connection that I'm hallucinating. Get out of here! You are not real! Huh? I'm not a hallucination. You said I could be in this video with you. Remember back in the day when you had a video about Bubble Bobble, you asked fans to send in clips of them singing the theme song, which I did? And that's back before we were real friends. Okay, look, you say friends in real life like that's still a thing. But yeah, I'll roll with it. Let's talk about Bubble Bobble. Riff, that's your real name. Yes! Before making its way to home systems like the NES, Bubble Bobble was first released in arcades back when public places were still a thing. And like many arcade games, that means its primary purpose was to gobble up your hard-earned quarters from, I don't know, mowing lawns? However kids earned quarters in 1986. That sounds right, and Bubble Bobble definitely ate up lots of quarters, but it was also one of the first games which had multiple endings. But its main characters, the adorable little dragons Bub and Bob, are also recognizable to this day. That's true, fake riff! I'm... I'm not fake. Bub and Bob might be even more recognizable as the mascots of the puzzle game Bust a Move, or Puzzle Bobble as it's known outside of North America. But before they were busting moves, they were pros at bobbling bubbles, which is definitely a thing. Leave me alone. There's actually a little bit more to this game than just, uh, bobbling bubbles. Bob and Bub are trying to rescue their girlfriends, just like the heroes of almost every game from this era. But to do so, they'll have to venture through the Cave of Monsters to get revenge on the evil Baron Von Blubba, who kidnapped their ladies and turned them both into tiny bubble dragons. Uh, there's no way that's real, because you just made that up, which means I made it up because you're just a figment of my unconscious mind. Gerard, you've played this game before, and for the last time, I'm not fake. I didn't play Bubble Bobble for the story. I barely even remember that I even had one. I just remember bubbling and bobbling my way through an endless number of levels, capturing enemies in bubbles, and then popping those bubbles, while maybe picking up some power-ups and some random assortments of food along the way. You can't move on to the next screen until every single enemy has been bubbled and then popped. And even though the gameplay in Bubble Bobble is really simple, it's also pretty hard due to those quarter-eating qualities we mentioned before. But honestly, I completed this game before and it should be fine. Don't forget about the theme song, Gerard. Remember the one song that this game has, which you're going to hear over and over and over and over and over and you're gonna keep hearing it. Yeah. I'm sure everything will be fine. So now that we're all stuck inside, slowly going mad, we need things to distract us and entertain us. And some stuff is just too heavy or complicated and sets the wrong vibe when your brain's already racing through nightmare scenarios. But you know what? As far as distractions go, simple retro games like Bubble Bobble are actually pretty perfect. I don't need to worry about the story or how these two guys feel about the fact that they've been turned into dragons, although I'd probably play a game that's all about that, but Bubble Bobble is still just screen after screen of jumping, bubbling enemies, and then popping those bubbles. And that's all there is to it. I honestly found it way more relaxing this time around, or at least I would have if there wasn't also a million things in this game that are so goddamn weird that I constantly felt like my brain was breaking. 
Oh, you mean like how the enemies burst into food for some reason when you clear a room? Or the bonus levels where the game suddenly gets competitive and you have to eat more things than the other person? Or the fact that some of the power-ups are clearly crosses, including one that fills the room with water? And what I guess is maybe like a, a Noah's Ark reference, maybe? Praise the Lord. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Or the craziest thing, which is collecting Extend, which sounds like a simple way to get an extra life, but you have to pop chains of enemies to summon the letter bubbles that you need to literally spell out the word Extend, even though the game never explains this. Like, what is ever happening in this game? And then you throw that goddamn song just on top of it, and I just have no words to express how surreal it felt to complete Bubble Bubble during a pandemic. It was so great to have something to do, but I also felt like that song was a drill slowly spinning its way into my skull, and I was expected to keep playing this weird-ass game. But Gerard, that song is what brought us together, remember? When you did your original episode, you had people send in videos of them singing or playing the Bubble Bobble theme, and now, years later, we're totally real, non-imaginary friends. But you're right that it can get a little maddening, especially given that the Cave of Monsters has 100 levels, all leading up to a boss fight, which is kind of weird because there are no bosses up until that point. Plus, you beat that boss by bubbling electricity and then firing that electricity out of your butt, which doesn't sound safe, but I don't know, what do I know? I mean, actually, I do know a lot. I actually work for an energy company and I work with electricity every single day, but oh, that wasn't in the script. It's a frantic and difficult boss fight. And while it would have been cool to put a boss like, I don't know, every 20 levels or so, it's still cool that there's an eventual change of pace, even if it does come at the end of 100 levels of mostly the same thing. But if you beat the boss by yourself, it tells you to come back and do it again with a friend, which is the first of those multiple endings I was talking about. Good thing you have a friend right here. Edward. <laughs> um, actually, I played this with my girlfriend Amanda because you're not real. And also because, you know, if you were real, social distancing and all that stuff. And it did give us something to do together in the quarantine, which was actually pretty great. Although thanks to the version that I played, I had no choice but to play this with a second player and not just because I needed to get all the endings. I tried to play the NES version of Bubble Bobble again, but couldn't because nothing is real and nothing means anything anymore. Also, my copy was at the office and we're in quarantine. So this time I actually ended up playing the arcade version of Bubble Bobble that's unlockable as a reward in Bubble Bobble for Friends, the newest Bubble Bobble game for the Nintendo Switch. But unlike last time, this version operates off of credits, which means if I played it by myself and died, I'd have to go all the way back to the beginning, which is just not happening. But if you have someone else playing, you can use continues to keep on rolling. Plus, it's just way easier, and on top of that, to complete the game, you need to do it with a minimum of another person. And since I no longer have the patience to try something crazy like, I don't know, playing with two controllers at the same time, Amanda helped me out. But just beating the game alongside the nearest friend, partner, or pet, well, that's not enough. That gets you a code you can use to play through the game again, but on super mode, which is much faster and much harder. And while the levels in this game are super quick, they do get really tough towards the end, especially on super mode. And once you've beaten the boss a third time, you get the third and final ending, where Bub and Bob not only rescue their girlfriends, but their parents too. I don't know, because why not? Yeah, why not? The universe is just meaningless chaos, so sure. Last time I forgot that I could just look up the codes, and while I remembered to do this this time around, deciphering it was actually kind of a pain in this version, because it wasn't really geared for the type of controller I was using. So that was fun, and definitely didn't make me feel even more like the entire universe rests on a foundation of lies. Although, if I'm being totally honest with myself, three playthroughs of Bubble Bobble flew by pretty quickly, and there are worse ways to kill an afternoon in quarantine. Even if the first ending, where the game chastises you for playing alone and tells you to never leave your friend behind, is a little too real now. Read the rune, Bubble Bobble. And since it's only a couple hours long, the game is over by the time the theme song would be sending you fully over the edge of insanity. Actually, now that I think about it, I, I have an idea, Gerard. If you want more friends, maybe you should have more people send in clips of them singing the theme song. 
since that worked out so well for me. Good idea, Ghost Riff. Wait, I thought it was fake Riff. People got so creative last time, I can't wait to see all the new takes on the theme. Here we go. I'm Santa Claus! I'm Santa Claus! I'm Santa Claus! Check out my claw! <laughs> wow, that was even better than last time. Thanks so much for sending in your videos, everyone. Dude, are you okay? Okay? What does that mean? And why is everyone making up all these words lately? Like the other day I heard someone say Wednesday. There's no way that's a real word. It also doesn't sound like it sounds. Wednesday, Wednesday, come on. Super Bubble Bobble is Bubble Bobble's only big unlockable, which is fine. I know better than to expect big completion bonuses from a game like this. And anyway, since it forces you to play through with another person, friendship is its own reward, right? Remember friends? Friends were great. I'm right here, man. But you're right. And this version doesn't even have the super exciting sound check that you unlocked last time. Yeah, that's fine. Because sure, Bubble Bobble was a decent distraction for a couple of hours, even if it meant listening to the same song over and 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 over. Oh, thanks, man. You know, I'm sorry I accused you for not being a real person. I really appreciate you doing this episode with me. It's no problem, man, but you were totally right. I was definitely born from the deepest depths of your subconscious. <gasps> I knew it! <laughs> While we re-completed Bubble Bobble, there were 100 levels defeated three times for a total of 300 levels, just like last time. Three endings, including the one that basically calls you out for being a loser if you play it alone, which seems to be way ruder now than it used to. Four and a half hours of total playtime, which actually flew by much more quickly this time around because I was so glad to have a fun, mindless distraction. And only one song. All other music has ceased to exist. There is only the Bubble Bobble theme. There will only ever be the Bubble Bobble theme. There has only ever been the Bubble Bobble theme. There will only ever be the Bubble Bobble theme. Submit to the bubbles. Submit to the bubbles. Submit to the bubbles. Hey, sorry about that. Uh, things were getting weird in case you couldn't tell. I know things are weird for everyone right now in the world and we can all use distractions like playing and talking about games with our friends. So I want to say thank you to Riff from Pixel Game Squad for manifesting from the depths of my mind to join us today. And a big thank you to Amanda, my girlfriend, and the dog at home for helping me finish this game and getting me through this insane quarantine. And while Bubble Bubble can only help people kill a few hours, there are definitely worse ways of doing that. Since I played the arcade version that was hidden in Bubble Bubble for Friends, that's kind of the only way that you can currently play it, and I hope, at the very least, that you enjoy Bubble Bobble for Friends. That game actually is kind of fun. As far as the original game goes in this, the arcade version, thinking about it now, I don't see the need to go full completionist with this. Play with a friend, get as far as you can, get to the end, and most importantly, have a good time. So, with that in mind, guys, I still give this game my completionist rating of Play It. Play it.